Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Taya and this is Glenny and today we are going to be working on the area around Nook's Cranny. So I've moved Nook's Cranny and now it's in quite an awkward spot because I placed it incorrectly. Let's just run over there and check it out. So in order to get Nook's Cranny out of the way, I had to put it back here, but as you can see, I have a gap behind it, which was not intentional. I meant to just place it over here temporarily, but have a two square path. And it kind of looks cute over here, to be honest, but this is not its permanent placement. So let's go over to where it will be going. So I have cleared out all of the flowers, all of the trees that I know that I don't want. I cleared down that huge block of terraforming. I did run over to Nook's Cranny and see what color of in-game flooring would work the best. I will add custom codes over whatever I put down, but I just wanted to start with something that would uh, match them. I do like using the in-game paths underneath all of the areas anyway, so I do think the terracotta really works well with Nook's Cranny because it is a very rather light colored building, building overall. But I do like the wood flooring. Now I'm using that everywhere. The wood flooring is like so warm and inviting feeling for me. But I am going with a primary colors vibe. So I made a little like mood board for this as well, which is pretty big actually. A lot of items that I want to incorporate. I think I want to go with the dark wood because it kind of matches the flooring that they have in Nook's Cranny. They have that like base that the building sits on that matches much closer to this wood. So I'm just going to go through and add all this in and then we will plan out with other paths where we want to put Nook's Cranny. I just want to get a sense for how much space we're working with. Let's just fast forward this whole part. Okay, so I'm not sure how far back I want to put Nook's Cranny, but I want to be able to put, I know I just took down a lot of terraforming from behind here, but I actually want to be able to put some terraforming back. If I put it here, then it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and then it's five deep. So one, two, three, Four, five. It is a huge building. Is it five or is it four? You know what? We got to check this out. Wait a second. It's only four. That's why I misplaced it because I thought it was five. Okay, so let's set it back even one farther. Maybe I'll place it over one square this way. Cause this has, oh, that's why I did it. Cause I had three squares on this side and three squares on this side. That's why I did it in that. But then I lose this tree and I can't extend the cliff cause I've got that tree down there, which adds a lot to the little walkway area, which I'm totally gonna change, but I have to move it over one square this way because I don't want to lose that tree. I want to have some framing on that side, you know? This is just for reference. Then we'll go get the plot marker so that we can have that in place. I think I like that better because I wanna have this side kind of have enough room to put maybe a stall or something here to display some things. And then we have one, two spaces to have like some fencing. And then we have still a good amount of space to put like some seating. I think that that would really work actually. Okay, let's continue with the pathing. All right, and I still have enough room to keep my little path. So, okay, let's just Actually, before we get the plot, let's just try to do some terraforming before because I, um, I do want to fit a tree up behind Nook's Cranny, even if it's just like a small little patch of terraforming. This area is in my flyover, so even if I have to do a cliff tree, actually, maybe that's okay. This tree is going to have to go. Yoink. Yoink. 
All right, well, do I have trees? I don't have trees. I have one tree. Okay, well, let's put this one tree while we're here. Okay, and then we can put another tree here. Good. Perfect. Oh, it looks so cute. Okay, that's perfect. Awesome. So now we have so much space. I love it. I think I'm gonna run the rest of this as a regular speed build and leave you to voice over Taya so that I don't have to narrate because this video could get very long if I try to narrate my entire process. And I will see you at the end to recap what I did with my very own face to talk to you. Okay, bye. Hello, this is voice over Taya and I'm just gonna walk you through the build. So I'm deciding what fencing I wanna use. I pretty much already knew, so that's the combo that I went with at the front there. Some hedges with the iron fence. I really like the iron fence, but I always love layering it with the hedge because it just gives that dimension and I like it that way. So I add an apple tree here because all of the colors for this build are very primary colors. As you saw, I added a uh, sapling down at the bottom, a little cedar sapling. That was not a good choice because as you saw, I put it on the edge and I don't know how I thought that would work out and to have a tree on the edge, but it doesn't. And I end up having to um, expand the cliff where it's jutting in a little bit on that side, but that's way later. Don't have to worry about that now. Um, I'm just dealing with the hedges and placement of some of the trees and flowers, even though some of them might end up moving eventually. I'm using hyacinth for this build. I'm using the red, yellow, and blue, of course. So primary colors through and through. And I feel like the hyacinth is not a super bright potent color either it's kind of softer so a lot of the items that i'm using are quite bright colored so i just thought you know what let's do the hyacinth also because it, i just happen to have a large abundance of blue hyacinth and hyacinth is my native flower so i was able to buy it in nook's cranny without trouble and i use quite a few of the mario items i use them more on that cliff above Nook's Granny because they're more like background elements for me. They're quite large, a lot of the Mario items, and they are quite distinctive. So when you put them all beside each other, it makes it look like you're trying to go for a whole Mario aesthetic, and that's not quite what I wanted to do with this build. So they are more in the background, which I think is super fun. Like I said earlier, this area is in my flyover, which I think is really cool. So I'm, I'm excited to see the flyover. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm, I'm looking forward to being able to have some cute Mario items in my flyover. I think that'd be really fun. And the festival items as well. I've been getting a little more comfortable at using these bright colored elements and I highly suggest it. If you're a little bit afraid of color, just dive in. And one of the techniques that I have been using to incorporate more color onto my island is making those mood boards like I was talking about before and like I showed you this one. What I do to make those is I go on Nookazon and I search by color because that's a filter option that you have on Nookazon. And if you filter by color, then you'll see items of that color pattern show up and you can filter them more like furniture items that are in that color, clothing items that are in that color. And you can see 
a variety of items in that color that you might not have thought about. So I searched against blue, yellow, and red, of course, the primary colors, just to find more items. And a lot of them were the Mario items. And I kind of knew that I wanted to use some of the Mario items, but the festival stuff I didn't think of. But then when I was searching on blue, I saw them come up and I was like, I have the blue. So that worked out really well. And then as I was looking through my inventory too, because when you're looking through your inventory, which is my favorite way personally to view items that I have in my storage, because they'll actually show visually and you can say, oh, that's, I didn't realize that I had the blue customization of that. And you can go through that way. That being said, primary colors is not an advanced color scheme by any means. It is one of my favorites though. It just has that really nostalgic kid feel to me that I enjoy so much. So yeah, primary colors is definitely fun. And also it just feels very like Timmy and Tommy. Like it feels like cute, an area that they would like. And I only really realized that after I finished, but it was the colors of Nook's Cranny itself that inspired me to do the um, primary colors theme for this. So the colors itself, because they have um, yellow and red and blue, the whole roof is blue. So I went more blue. I tried to focus the most on blue, but incorporating that red and putting some yellow punches in as well, just to brighten it up. So I used the pansy tables and I originally I thought that I was going to use like the flower DIYs. I kind of wanted to go with my fruit furniture thing and use the flower DIYs, but the flower DIYs are so different from each other. Um, maybe in the future I'll do that, but it was a little bit hard to plan a cohesive area with those flower items because there's like a bed and the lily record and none of it really to me matches. So I decided to abandon that and just use the pansy tables because they have that primary color scheme, which is fantastic. I love it. And I wanted to have like more of a fast food environment, if that makes sense. So I do put an espresso maker onto that festival stall, but the whole popcorn and the cookie stall and then I end up putting a vending machine in as well. This is more like you're coming to grab a quick snack on your break so that Timmy and Tommy can come out and just grab themselves a little soft drink and a cookie and get back to work. And this blanket code, how adorable is that? I found it on Twitter and this creator is super talented. They've created quite a lot of like kid core items. I did use this blanket in a couple of other areas on my island already and I absolutely love it. It's so fun. And I'm using the daisy path here, uh, which is if you just search daisy path, it comes up. It's like one of the first pages, but I'll also link all of the creator codes down below. I'll also try to link to everybody's Twitter accounts because I find that that's nice. I always like to see people on Twitter because that's where they're going to be updating if they've added something new and then you can be the first ones to use their cool new designs. So I love to follow people on Twitter as well. And I'm moving this seating area over one more space because I don't want it to be blocking the door too much. I want to have a clear path straight to the front entrance and I also didn't want it to feel so far away from the other seating areas. And it's looking super cute already. I move this construction sign around quite a bit, but I end up putting it uh, down closer to the entrance way where I just dropped that coin actually. But I find that coin spins pretty fast and the way that the light can hit it is a little bit distracting sometimes. So I do prefer that more as a background element. I love the balloons here. For a little while I was like, hoarding balloons because of course you get different colors and you don't always get balloons in your nook's cranny every day so i was just like every day checking nook's cranny to get the different colored balloons in my catalog <laughs> i think i have all of them now but they're a super fun design element 
And I put that vending machine down and I love that little grouping of three with the vending machine, the anthurium plant and the balloon. Oh my goodness, it's so cute. And I think that I'm getting pretty close to the end here. Just a few final finishing touches. Yep, putting stuff on the tables. And I end up going forward a day in a second here just to see how things are coming along. And I figure out that that tree has not fully grown. So we'll get to that in a second here too, I think. But putting pansies onto the pansy tables. I didn't know what else to really do with that, but I think it's actually super funny. <laughs> and I love that mom's tea cozy too. It's absolutely adorable. Here I am trying to use a baby chair and the baby chair I didn't realize is so ridiculously small next to everything else so I end up not doing that. And even though I brought two diner counter chairs with me, I end up only leaving the one because I like the clear flow, the walking path that I have there. And just putting a puddle, <clears throat> for whatever reason, a puddle underneath that Hello Kitty. <laughs> That Hello Kitty planter, which I love. And here I'm adding in some bag designs, a little spilled apple juice. And I'll make sure to put all these creators down below, as I said, so you'll be able to see them there. I love that chips, the spilled chips is so cute. And some more of the Daisy Path accents, as well as a design that I made myself actually and I'll put my creator code down there too, even though it's not nothing fancy, but it's just a couple little twinkles. They look really nice on uh, the stone pathway as well. So I think I'm just about to wrap up for this day and head forward by one day, but oh yes, I do end up adding like one of my favorite details from this whole build, which is the standard umbrella stand, which is a DIY that I only got like very recently from Nookazon. I'm so happy with it. I've been throwing them literally everywhere on my island. So there I go, I jumped forward a little bit and I'm adding some stuff that I ordered. So I ordered the red espresso maker and then also this blue folding chair, which I think is so adorable. So I would like to add a red folding chair as well. I just don't have that item catalog. So when I do, I will add it in there probably. And I end up just um, making some modifications here because the tree was creating a bit of a pinch spot with that street lamp. So I just move around with flowers and uh, I miss the tree there, but it's not the end of the world, that's fine. Speaking of misplaced trees, however, I come over to this side and realize that my sapling is still a sapling because I placed it on the edge of the cliff. So I have to start up the Island Designer app, which I did not want to do, but I did. And I ripped apart my entire, as you can see, my entire uh, canal area. I destroyed it. Um, I will be rebuilding it. I've already started rebuilding it off camera. It's looking super cute. So I can't wait to show you guys very soon what that's looking like. But I, um, I do end up changing that entirely. So it wasn't the end of the world to have to slightly modify the area for that uh, canal street below. So just finishing up with some pathway and then I will see you guys on the other side of the B-roll. Hello everybody, we are back. We have time traveled a bit to see the trees and the flowers all grown in properly. And this is my completed Nook's Cranny. It's so cute 
and colorful. I feel like it's exactly what Timmy and Tommy would like to have on their break. Maybe they come out here, they get a little tea, hang out with a villager or two, and then they, you know, get some popcorn, maybe get a little cookie. Oh gosh, can I get this present? Can I get this present in a good spot? Oh my gosh, is that gonna be my thing now? Oh no, don't thought the chair. That'll do. That's adorable. Okay, that worked out. Yeah, so we've got some more of a childlike aesthetic. I won't say that it's kid core because I don't consider this kid core, but please let me know. Do you think this is kid core? But I just think it's cute. So cute core, let's go with that. I put a vending machine here and as you could see, I can still access the drop-off box here. So that's really cool. I was a little bit worried after I put this balloon in front, I built it out this area with without Nook's Cranny actually there. So I can still access and read this signboard and access the drop-off box with stuff in front, which is, I really like it. it kind of pulls Nook's Cranny forward, like out into the surrounding area. That's pretty much all there is to it. I thought you'd be able to see more of what is above here from the ground, but you can't. But it still adds a nice layer when you're walking through this little pathway. You still get a little glimpse of all the things that are up there. And you still see a little bit of that utility pole, which I like, makes it feel a little bit more urban. So I think it turned out great, really happy with it. Let me know what you think, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.